Bonjour tout le monde. Hello everyone. This is your favorite French Canadian playing Factorio. Right now we are on Playground 3. Uh, I've been working on this map for some time now, if we have a look. The save game says I've been playing on it for 486 hours or something. Uh, the truth of it is I've not actually played on it that long, but it has been running this long. For those of you who have been following my streams on Twitch, uh, please you can come and have a look at Florian, F-L-O-O-R-A-A-N, on Twitch. Uh, every now and again I stream my games. This is actually the very first YouTube video I'll be posting, and this is a suggestion from one of my followers on Twitch. So, Playground 3. I'm playing on the latest version of the experimental branch of Factorio. Uh, this is why there's a few things you will not be seeing in the mainstream game. So, right now we're on what's called the, AF the AFK train, or the tech stop train. Uh, this is a train I use when playing to go around the map, because I tend to play rather large games. And this is what you're going to be looking at for the duration of this video. Uh, the goal of this video is actually first a test of the actual map. Right now I've been building up inventory on science vials uh, while I run other tests on this map. So I have about uh, 60 to 100,000 of each of the vials and I need to do some research to get rid of them. So I'm testing my research facility uh, this is a separate research facility. Uh, it gets the vials by trains. The goal of this map is to reach and maintain 1,000 science per minute. I actually have another map that does more than this, but the goal is to see if I can do it while still maintaining close to 60 FPS. Uh, the thing is, my computer and the kinds of map I tend to run uh, don't like each other. I run very, very large factorial maps, so no matter what computer you have, they tend to be a little uh, troublesome because just of how much stuff is in them. But uh, the goal here is 1,000 science per minute. But if I want to do that properly, I need to be able to eat them faster than that. So I built a science facility. Uh, the goal of the science facility was to reach about 1.5k and this is a test to see if that's what's going on so far it looks like that's what's happening if you look at the curve we're looking at 10 minutes right now let's look at an hour you can say I started it not that long ago and we're going to be spending it on mining productivity uh, 7, 8, 9 going up uh, the reason for this is the way this map is built there we go we've got one finished is uh, I've got very rich but relatively tiny mines that means it's hard to get good throughput from them adding productivity uh, surprisingly enough actually increases how much you get because it doesn't slow the mine down just increases how much gets out so this will help solve that problem and make my mines you know last longer uh, it's also the only one i can actually afford at the moment to do more than one i've the first because of the way i've built this map i really needed robot speed so I got it up to level 13 I'll be needing 120k to do the next one so I need to build up inventory and do a bunch of stuff first even though I'm at max inventory right now uh, I wanted to increase mining as well so figured I'd get those out of the way uh, right now I've got them queued up to level 13 mostly because I don't think I'll have enough to do more but here let's add the last one Sorry about that. And yes, I do plan to post this unedited as if it were live, so deal with this stuff. I'd say excuse my French, but if I sit do, I have to then actually say something in French because c'est quand même ma première langue, c'est ma langue maternelle. Deal with it. Now, this is a view of the whole map. The way I've built it, it is in different sections. Each little town basically is self-contained in that it does everything it needs to do to output vials from raw materials. Uh, 
uh, I'm trying something on this map, which is all local treatments. So basically, each one of these is a little town. The materials come in, and forges, or whatever else I need to do to it. For example, if I have to have crude oil, petroleum products to make plastics in this case. And it just goes around from the mines to a sorting center here, which stores all the ore. And you'll be going around this map as we run the test. I don't know how long I'll make this video yet, but it's probably going to be a interesting one in that it's going to be rather long. You may want to skip ahead sometime later. Right now I'm pretty happy. It looks like we're doing 1.5k a minute. So that's very good. And it's getting my research done at an interesting speed. This is the actual research center. As you can see, I've got a number of research labs with some beacons in the middle. I haven't filled the beacons in the middle because yeah, I didn't think it looked right. And this is fast enough as it is. There's a bunch of them already, two lines. They're getting it from here. All lines coming from the train, which are actually able to provide enough, as you can see. It's coming by train here. And all the different towns. This is Space Town. Here, let's give you a tour of Space Town. We start with the raw materials coming in by train. As you can see, there's a lot of copper. That's because we need a lot of copper for running Space Vial right now. Nothing's running here uh, because I've stopped vial production. I'm actually mostly out of the raw materials. I'm Although I'm not getting an alert anymore, which is good. Uh, I'm letting that stock build back up because to make this run, this map run properly, now that I've tested all the different towns, I'm going to need a lot more mines. I don't have enough mines right now. So I'm not letting it run, I'm just letting it build up. While we spend the vials we've been building up over the last two days, as I do other stuff while this map is just running in the background. So. Raw materials down here. We've got our electric furnaces built into what I call a forge, which is a big thing here. Doing these ones are all doing iron and copper. If we go down here, we're doing steel on two lanes because this needs a sh lot of steel and a lot of plastic to make a lot of these little guys which are lightweight structures, low density structures, which are needed to make the rockets. So all of these are making low density structures, get them sent via this belt here. This uh, belt is actually good enough to transport all of what we're, we're building in here all these columns. It's full right now because, as I said, we're not currently building science vials. This is used to feed this little guy here that sends our rockets into space. We've got a little town here. It's just for making the satellites. Now, right now, I'm actually not making enough space vials, even with this whole base. I need to check why. Uh, I suspect right now it's because I'm having trouble feeding it. Uh, but it needs a little work. It's the last one I've built, uh, so still needs some twiddling. But for now, it's good enough. Up here, we're building mostly this. these lines export the processing units. But I do export a few extra green boards that are being built, because this actually builds too many simple electronic boards so I can feed them down here to the town to make what's needed for satellite and I make some extras here just for this part this feeds up into a line 
That's double. Actually comes from these, gets all smooshed together. And splits into two lines. One going up, one going down. That is combined with the speed modules, which are being made healed with a very similar assembly, except we're making the speed modules at the top instead of the processing units. This one actually doesn't produce a lot of extra green boards compared to the other one, just because of the ratios that you need to make the speed modules and the speed everything goes at. Now I realize I could add speed modules level 3 into the speed modules factories, but then the stuff on below it has trouble filling it up. So I actually need to look into this design to make this work all properly. This is the last one I need to tune, and the first one I'm showing you, so deal with it. This is where we're dealing with petroleum products for the whole town, from crude and water to the three different petroleums. Conversion is then here, so we don't uh, end up with too much of light oil or heavy oil. As you can see, we're actually fill filling up. Light oil is down a little bit just because we've been making more uh, rocket fuel because the stack is a little bit bigger. But when this is all running, I don't run out of anything right now. I was running out of uh, petroleum gas because I wasn't converting the light oil fast enough, which is why there's a shit ton of beacons here. In here I'm making rocket fuel for the rocket and a lot of plastic for the different components mostly being fed into the lines that make the boards for blue and modules and a second line here going just for the low density structures here we make the computer they get piped down here right now there's none being made because the alarms here are not getting the signal to output it's all stacked up in the factories, up to five, because that's where it stops. And when it gets a signal, it'll just start outputting the computers, which will then get fed into here and start the process of the rocket cycle doing its thing. Uh, right now, it's out of the rocket control unit because I'm getting fed which is how I stop production. The rest of it just stacks up on the belts, but that's fine. It just means it starts quicker instead of having to wait. The vials then get output here on this line, looking all the way down, down, this way, this way, this way, into the drains that output them. The space train is set up so that it will consider itself full at the same level as all the other trains and not at the normal stacking of 2000. I've reduced how many uh, slots are available in the, in the cargo to do that so I can use full inventory. This little gizmo is to make sure with the little uh, thing here that we don't stack up too many in the boxes here so that the train fills up nice and smooth. It's also why I'm using the slowest arms that are electric. Uh, they're still fast enough with the bunch of them I have here to load it into the train faster than the rocket side is able to put output them so it works fine. Next, since we're next to it, let's have a look at a mine. This is one of my mines. The way the mines work, even though this one only does iron, is the same for all of the other mines. Products have to come in at the top of the balancer and are stopped or allowed through, in this case not allowed through, depending on the inventory of the central deposit. So if I'm getting, say, copper, in other lines here, which I eventually will because there's a 
copper mine here. I need to actually add it to this log, but I haven't yet. Same for maybe eventually this uranium, but I've got more than enough right now, so I don't need it. The train then goes from the mine. Each mine has a number of trains assigned to it, uh, in this case three. Train goes from here, goes on the main rail network, goes all the way around here like this, and comes down here, where it gets dumped into the deposit. Now I'm trying something sorta new here, I haven't done before, successfully. I done it before, but it didn't work really well, because I was literally using too many robots, it was a problem. So what I've done right now is I've decided to only use them to transfer the ore from the trains to the boxes. The nice thing about doing it this way is that when, as I'm working up on the research on them, I'm going to be able to carry more ore and dump it faster than I would with just the belts, I'm hoping. Uh, that will require a bunch of upgrades to robot speed, but the hope is that this it will make this part use less computer resources in the end than it would doing it with belts, because sorting ore from trains using belts is crazy complicated if you want to get good output. The problem is always speed. I could send trains that are not mixed, but that carries its own lot of issues and I wanted to try this approach this time. I don't know if it'll work out right or not, but for now that's what I'm using. And so far it's working kind of nice. Even at the robot speed I have right now, which is not that fast, we're currently sitting on speed 12. The next one is going to be speed 13. Uh, 12 costs 64k. The robot speed always doubles, so it gets really expensive really quickly. Which is not the case with mining, which is why I'm doing that run right now. So it sorted sit owl into boxes that output their inventory into a map-wide information network using the green wire. The green wire is used on the large-scale network to carry inventory information. That's it. I don't carry controls on green. I carry controls on red. Why? I just decided to do it that way. It keeps it easier to do things. So, this thing then outputs using a the green network its inventory and the mind control is actually done at central control, which I will show you later. All the towns, except for space, have been calibrated to do at least 1,000 science per minute. Most of them are a little bit over that. There's one of them, which I will not tell you at the moment, you can come later to look in the videos to find out which one, that outputs a lot more than that. But, eh, that's why there's inventory control on sciences as well. There was a good reason behind that. It's a mistake I made, and I decided to keep it. Now, this is all for this video. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching.